In this episode, we ask the question, how do scientists track and monitor blue crab populations in the Chesapeake Bay? Hey, Josh Bernstein here. I'm in Annapolis, Maryland, enjoying a local favorite, the blue crab. What the lobster is to Maine, the blue crab is to Maryland. They love their crabs here. And rightly so, millions of crabs are harvested each season from the Chesapeake Bay watershed. And they bring in a lot of money. But there's a problem. In recent years, blue crab populations in the Chesapeake have plummeted. I want to know why. To learn more about the situation, I'm driving to Edgewater, Maryland, to visit CERC, the Smithsonian Environmental Research Center. I've arranged to meet Dr. Tuck Hines, marine ecologist and CERC's director. Tuck and his team study the factors that affect blue crab populations, and he's offered to show me how they track and monitor the blue crabs. The Smithsonian Environmental Research Center has been studying the Road River system as a part of the larger Chesapeake Bay for 50 years now. Every month, we're out trawling to catch crabs right, yes. and measure that, which is what we're going to do today. Yeah. Tuck explains that CERC scientists collaborate with other scientists as well as the fisheries and watermen to help assess what factors are affecting the crab population. You know, the environment is extremely variable, so one data point isn't sufficient for a scientist. Yeah, yeah, yeah. You have to take lots of data points, but we have lots of data points. Yeah. We have not only lots of data points this year, but over the last 35 years, before we started taking our data a long time ago here, we didn't know a lot about blue crabs and what they did in an average yeah. day. Now we know tremendous more uh, about blue crabs and their biology, but they're still unknowns. And uh, how the complexities of climate change, of fishing, of habitat degradation, of other predators in the system, all these, and disease, all these different things are interacting. CERC focuses its research on capture and release studies, collecting snapshots of data about the blue crab populations. Why don't we uh, get set up? And we can see some crabs. And we'll see crabs, okay. I hope. Perhaps so too. <laughs> okay, Josh, let's launch the net. All right, what do I do? Throw the float. Chuck it? Yeah, go ahead. Today, we're using a large net called an otter trawl. It has heavy weights which help keep it open as it travels along the bottom of the water being pulled by the boat. We'll fish for about 10 minutes, which is a, a fixed distance. We know how wide the net is open and how long that is, so we can estimate the abundance of crabs per square meter of the trawl. Okay. To get a long-term picture of crab populations, scientists trawl 30 times a year, using the exact same trawling technique. The trawl net spreads out along the bottom, just along the sediment, so that it can collect the benthos, or community of creatures that live along the seabed. After a set time, the net is brought into the boat where all the fish and invertebrates are identified, measured, and counted. Because crabs are solitary and not evenly distributed, scientists must take samples at many locations, trying to get an accurate estimate of the population. There it goes. You hit any crabs or anything, just shake them down. Once the net is in, the catch is released into a bucket for sorting. We then separate the crabs from the fish. We begin collecting data on each crab, while the others record data on the fish. It's a beautiful creature. It's called beautiful swimmer. The scientific right, name man. is Kalanectes sapidus. Which means beautiful So why swimmer. are they called swimmers? Hey, beautiful swimmer or beautiful swimmer that tastes good? I've read, I've read it both ways. All right, let's tag them. Okay. We're measuring the crab's shell length from point to point, its sex and maturity, and noting its physical condition. It's like 140. Yep, that's right. Right, 140. As part of a capture and release study, we attach a circ tag to some of the crabs. Wrap three times around and on the point. Make them tight. Does that seem okay? Yep. And then do the same thing on the other side. Be sure that it pulls it taut across yeah. the carapace of the crab. Yeah, it's tricky. I do appreciate that this little guy is uh, He's being very patient. Very patient. He's not saying anything. I think he knows that I've eaten a lot of his brethren. <laughs> Each tag is secured to the crab's shell and has an ID and phone number. There's a monetary reward for catching the crabs, between $1 to $50. Yeah. Perfect. All right. Be free. There you go. Once the tagged crab is released, anyone who catches it can call to report when and where it was caught. This helps scientists track the crab's movement, 
Using combined data from the trawls and capture release study, scientists have discovered that blue crab populations have severely declined. What can be done to help the crabs? There are many factors impinging on blue crabs, but the one that we have the most control over is fishing, because we're responsible for the fishing. Is it possible <clears throat> for the population of blue crab to recover? Yes. The challenge of monitoring blue crabs and fish is that the bay is very large and stretches over many states. These states must work together to create laws to protect and monitor their fisheries. Watermen must also still be able to make a living. If you're a waterman, you can't just stop having any income for, yeah. for a year or two years. But if you can back off on the fishing pressure, the population will recover. Blue crabs have great reproductive potential, and so there's good hope with good management that we can yeah. be, have a sustainable fishery. As for our original question, how do scientists track and monitor blue crab populations in the Chesapeake Bay? Using capture and release and trawling, scientists can assess the population of blue crabs in the Chesapeake Bay, which can provide vital information to states and fisheries managers. Studying blue crabs and crab management is complex due to the size of the bay and the many interests involved.